And by that time, though, when I was working him out, he'd be like, you got to get struck in the mood sometimes. All right, welcome to another episode of Talk and Taste. I'm Brandon Bass. I'm Dr. Esteban Santiago. And I'm Leroy Tyrone, Young Machine. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, how was, how was yoga today? It's great, bro. Great, yeah. great, yeah. Getting you made better. it? It's been a minute. You made it? Yeah, I'm getting better. They say getting better every time I come, so that's a, that's a plus. All right. You know? That's the one when they would make it. No, man. I'll be with y'all now. <laughs> now I made it today, though. But I'm here, though. <laughs> we appreciate you for, for coming on, man. I appreciate it, bro. Appreciate yeah, it, bro. Um, I want, we, we need to enlighten the people today. Let's do it, about man. About sports and medicine. Let's do it. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. Man, so first, man, I want to congratulate y'all both, man. I feel like y'all doing an amazing job, man. For all, like, I mean, I really mean it. Um, really admire the work you guys have been doing. Be TJ, I love it, man. I truly, you know, I, I, I appreciate you guys having me in here. Um, don't really be doing a lot of podcasts, man, but I felt like it was needed. I felt like I'm on my, my way here and I'm like, man, I got to I gotta figure out a way to tell this next generation and tell these people out there that what we do is not just work, it's a lifestyle. So we really live by this and we truly, you know, try to do our best every single day to inspire the youth and make sure that we make a positive impact on this world. So we're going to my story. You want to know my story first? Or you want to know more what I do? Yeah, tell me your upbringing. Okay. So yeah, man, just a regular human being. I started, you know, like I was telling TJ from Puerto Rico, born and raised, my whole family's out there. I take a lot of pride on it because not a lot of people where I'm from made it, you know? So for me, it's, it's a responsibility. It's not just something that I do to, you know, to be better only, but to also represent my culture and where I'm from. Um, secondly, man, I've been blessed enough to be, you know, raised by two hustlers, not just two hustlers that just hustle to, you know, to, to get money, but mostly hustle for integrity and respect, right? Which were my parents. I give them all the respect in the world just because they raise a man out of me. And um, I learned a lot from them at an early stage of my life. And then thirdly, you know, just, you know, I was an athlete, man. I was an athlete myself that played the sport of basketball. And I always looked for insights that I could possibly get better at. You know, I always was obsessed. The word obsessed is not really utilized a lot nowadays, but I truly feel like I'm obsessed with what I do. And it came up with a young age where, you know, I was a basketball player. I wasn't ranked. I wasn't top elite one, right? But my mentality was, the way I approached the game was, the way I respected the game was, right? And I told myself, listen, man, if, if I don't ever go and play professional, which was my goal, I want to be in the business. And I don't know what it is, but God is going to have an amazing plan for me to be exactly where I have to be. So, you know, I decided that I was such a geek, in other words, to, to know what I love about, to know the human body, to know the performance, the training side of things, the skills, right? I practice it so much that I just became a habit, right? It became muscle memory to me. Um, so within time, I told myself, why don't I just prepare myself for this type of environment so that I can have the proper qualifications to say that what I do, I do it with a lot of passion, respect, and knowledge. Um, and yeah, man, I just basically went from being an athlete on a prep school that I got an opportunity to play in Massachusetts in Wilbraham uh, Monson Academy into uh, just playing um, college basketball um, and focusing more on my studies. I had the opportunity to study sports medicine, did my certifications of you know training, strength and conditioning, and then decided that you know if you look around this world, how many trainers do you see? There's about a lot, right? There's about millions of trainers approaching little and uh, approaching guys um, on a daily. And I told myself, like, I don't want to be another one. Like, and that's okay. You can be the best trainer. I'm not, you know, trying to, you know, put a picture on that, you know, uh, on that way. But I felt like for me, I needed more. Like, I was more of a uh, trying to figure out what else can I bring to the table, right? And that's when I told myself, man, I, I got I to gotta go for something else. I already know the physical therapy aspect. I got to add more, 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 you know, more tools to the bag and then that's where chiropractic medicine came through and my decided became a doctor and physician came through so I could provide more for what I did, right? 
I think that we're givers. You're a giver. You're a giver, right? Every day you wake up, you give the best to your son. Every day you wake up, you give the best to your family and son, right? And to other people. We're not in this business just because of what we do, but by the last we can impact other people. So that's literally my, my, my purpose on my that's a good one, man. That's a good one. Um, so, um, Dorado Beach, right? Yeah, Dorado. I'm from Dorado. That's where you're from? Well, raised and born in Vega Alta. Mm -hmm. We, my family, bro, like I said, two hustles with integrity. We had nothing. No, the reason why I, I brought up Dorado because um, that used to be my um, vacation spot. Yeah. When, um, when I was playing in the NBA, every All-Star break, I would go to Dorado. And I think, TJ, you just, you oh, just, yeah, we just, just, we just went there and stayed at the Ritz. Yo, that right. place is a lot yeah. of athletes yeah. that go there, bro. And it's lit because it's calm, quiet, and, and collected. Yeah. Right. And, and you know something cool about the um, the property uh, at the Four Seasons that I, I stayed at? Uh, is it is it the Rocker? Is it the Rockefeller family owned that land there? Uh, I think the I think the Rockefeller family. Do you know the Rockefeller mm -hmm. family? They own the land that is on, or they used to own it. Yeah. So yeah. I thought that was a cool. Um, yeah. It's mainly the no, uh, there's a, there's a, I think a law or something, I'm not sure, but if you're from out of state, you move to Puerto Rico, the taxes and everything further, yeah. it kind of makes sense to a lot of people. This is, this are, I, mean, I, met a, I met a guy over there, bro, that moved, moved from here over there to, to PR just because he was talking about the taxes and they got some cheap. And um, Dorado has become that spot. Yeah. 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 What, what's your taste when it comes to style, fashion, and our music? Well, at a young age, bro, like, Low key, I used to rap at a young age. You know what I'm saying? I used to rap, come from Puerto Rico. We have a lot of reggaeton artists. We have a lot of Latino community. So I always felt like, going back to the roots of what we're talking about, the business, like I couldn't name my business Dr. Esteban Santiago. I felt like that's just, I couldn't go as far as I wanted to go. With that. Right? And I'm big on music. I'm big on fashion. I'm big on... You know, I consider myself a creator. I don't think we just in this world to just work. I mm -hmm. think we create new trends and new styles, right? And, and that's the beauty of it, of it all, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I feel like, you know, it plays a huge role. Definitely, um, my clinic is More Life. You know, one of the albums that impacted me more was Drake's album, More Life. I feel okay. like I went through a lot through it. You know, my life and the moment I was going through, I went through a lot. Um, and that album, you know, kind of got me through it. Like music has this amazing therapy in the human body, which, you know, releases hormones and, 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 and gets you feeling better out of whatever situation that you're in, man. So I'm, uh, I'm big on that. I'm big on waking up, looking myself in the mirror and saying, man, you, you got this. So dress like it, feel like it, and go conquer the world. That's, that's my thoughts when it comes down to fashion, music, and everything as we go. Hi. Um, so how you feel about Drake going through what he's going through right now with Kendrick Lamar? <laughs> it's been a battle, man. The other day I, I had it. <laughs> and, and how you think he gonna come out of it? I had uh, I had the kids doing a whole setup of okay, who won, bro? I lost by a lot, man. I was done. I was done with it, man. Listen, man, we took some L's. He just took it out. That's all it is. Take it out. Keep it moving. Stay commercial and. Uh, you know, you never know, but uh, that was a tough one, bro. I don't know, y'all beat me up. You, 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 do, do, I think that uh, it seems like Drake is out in the world really enjoying himself and, yeah. and, and really, uh, you know, doing the music at a real high level, right? But it's like Kendrick Lamar is sitting in his basement <laughs> thinking about some type of okay. traffic jack shit too. Yo, no cap, but like yeah. even JC said it, like this is this guy and eating some cereal, writing down some rhymes, you know what I'm saying? Like he said it in a... In, in a in a podcast, he said, like, never feel accomplished enough. And I think that sometimes being comfortable gets you, you know, woken up. You know? But, but you, you know what I think? Too? I actually think it just seemed like it was a little strategic by Kendrick, bro, to go at Drake. Because, like, Drake been at the top for so long. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just felt like he, 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 he strategically went behind him. Set that up for somebody to bite. 100%. And Drake said for it, like he always do. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Yeah. And he uh, he did his thing. Uh, that's part of the game, man. That's, yeah, that's part part of you game. gotta like cannot you know emotions have to be controlled most of yeah. the time, man. It's just that way, man. Tell, I tell me this, all right. So being that you feel like Drake lost, right? Mm -hmm. Um, or do you love to win or hate to lose? 
I don't see that, like, this is the thing, man. I, I, I'll take an L on the fact that he got what he did. Mm -hmm. Kendrick did what he did, right? But I also recognize that greatness is not always going to be the top. Mm -hmm. At the top. Mm -hmm. You can't win at everything. It's your goal to try to win. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you this. People that set themselves for first, they don't be always striving for first. They love what they do. They're committed to what they do. And then they get to the first position, right? But around it, bro, you, you're going to have your battles. And that's part of the game. And I think that if you can take, you know, an L or maybe not an L, a lesson and say, you know what, bro, it's okay because I still can deliver highly in other ways, then you can move with more, you know, and counter on that point. So, yeah, man, it's just part of, you know, life. I've, I've taken my L's in life, right? Um, but I, instead of losses, I see them as lessons. And I feel like a lot of people and athletes too, we just be too much on L's on, on scenarios that are negative. Like if, we, if we be outside right now, right, you're going to drive, you have somebody bumping a horn on you because you're not going quick. There's always going to be somebody testing, right? This world is just going to push you to that negativity. But it's your job to really remain positive, and that's where self-care and self-investment is important. Mm -hmm. You might think eating healthy, doing your yoga, um, drinking a glass of water with lime, right? Um, drinking your multivitamins. It's something that we, you know, don't have to do it, but we do. Mm -hmm. We really do because that set the tones of the day, you know, of how we're going to feel, how we're going to, you know, mentally be driven on the world because it's a negative place, bro. It's, it's this world will drop you to that, okay? You, you, you know what I like that you said? You said greatness is not always number one. Right. Meaning like, you know, because even when you look at a dynamic of a, of a team, right, you got your franchise player, you have, you know, uh, your six man, uh, you know, you may have the guy who just uh, the person on the bench who just root for the team, you know, um, and they all great in their own way. You, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's a that's a lesson in itself to um, for people out in the world to star in their role. You know, um, because I, I think like I asked the question of loving to win and hating to lose because I tell me what you guys think when it comes to um, developing kids versus developing pros. Like, give me some some what you guys experienced over the years about developing it too. I'm gonna break it down simple, bro. Like as simple as I can when it comes down to development. A professional athlete, most of the times, has already been in that environment where it's like they have worked out so much, right? Mm -hmm. Or it's more about me sitting down and asking him, how can I help you? What are the things that we need to focus on to help you? Alan, get your career. Two different type of professionals, the one that started, that are rookies, the one that are sophomores, right? You know, the ones that are starting have to train different than the ones that are already there, 30 years old. So it's a big gap between it, right? Where you have to you know, you have to require more from the younger ones. And then the older ones, you have to be more detail-oriented on everything. Mm -hmm. Now, you still got to be detailed on everything, right? But you have to focus more on how to make them think smarter, mm -hmm. not just outworking your competition, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you have to be specific. Not everybody's the same. Kids function different nowadays. Kids have a different story to tell. And it's your job to understand it. I don't take kids, bro, like, oh, let's just work out. Let's just do it. And that's it. No, I have to know you. I have to know who you are. Because if not, I might be missing a part of you that will make this work out a great session, right? Um, so then you have the kids who are young, right? And that's where the great part comes, man, because kids who are young, they're so naive to the world. They're so naive to to, to failing, to struggling, right? And I feel like if you don't build a great foundation on them in the beginning, they're not gonna follow. Mm -hmm. So if I'm laid back in the beginning with a kid, he not gonna, what? He not gonna be aggressive. He gonna be laid back. Mm -hmm. So I think that with the young generation is more mental, it's more making them believe, it's more making them look themselves and say, I can do this. If I'm self-disciplined, if I'm obsessive with it, 
And if I really, really put in the work for a professional athlete it has two different mentalities. How's my contract? Can you duplicate your contract? Can you make more money after it? Are you willing to make the effort for us to keep going at it and communicate with your team about the things that you're doing? Because I am not going to lie. It's my name. If you're not putting the work and they call me, I try to avoid the call, but I can't really tell them, yo, he's doing great, working out all the time, right? And I have specific scenarios that that has happened where they send NBA guys to our NBA trainers to our facility to see the players training. And I'm human. I'm going to help you out, but you got to help yourself. Now, kids need to know that because uh, it's, it's, because even in college, like, I mean, I, I'm sure all both of you guys heard about it. Like, you know, when when you're in high school or in college and, and with dreams of be, becoming a pro, you know, scouts and uh, teams would go and ask people in high school or college about you. You know, how is his work ethic? How is he as a person? And uh, you want your reputation to precede you. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. That's great. Uh, yeah, man. Um, you think so, about you think about that the same. What are your thoughts on that? Definitely, what you said about the foundation. Um, like that's why I'm, you know, when I'm training kids that are like ten and under, bro, I'm focusing on their footwork. Once you get the footwork down with basketball, man, you're gonna have a party out there because mm-hmm. now you can manipulate the game however you wanted to. So teach them the foundation is just, you know, just do that. You know, do that. Have the same footwork, left, right, catch the shoes, or right, left, for you know the proper footwork then. Then everything else is like, okay, you're gonna be playing against other kids. You're gonna be like, man, it's gonna be, it's gonna be too easy. Nice. And then with the, um, kind of like with, with the pros, I try to teach them, you know, the intangibles because most most pros, whatever team you go to, you're not gonna be that guy. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of rookies coming out don't understand. That. It's like, bro, let me teach you how to be comfortable in whatever situation that you're in, whether it's. Right now, I got Kevin Durant that I'm playing with. I got Chris Paul that I'm playing with. I got Carmelo. I got Kobe. Like, all those guys you're playing with. How can you be, be effective playing with those guys? That don't mean you stop working on your craft, right? But you got to understand, bro, you're not going to go out there and shoot 50 shots, 20 shots a game. You got to go out there and say, you know what? Look who I'm playing with. Let me go be a lockdown defender. Let me go run the floor. Let me let me box out. Let me do all the intent. Let me guard the other team's best players so KD can rest. Like you gotta have, you gotta think and understand the game from that standpoint. Because at the pro level, that's all it is—just is playing smarter. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Man, that's that's that initial combo. Like I spoke before I work with them, bro. I call them. How do I, bro? Like, what's going on? How you doing? Like, I need to know where we at. Because I'm not gonna jump into getting you the work and everything, and really not know how far can I push you. What is your mentality? What are your thoughts on this? Right? And I feel like we miss it. We miss it a lot of times because we're not. I take part of my eval, bro. I take part of my evaluation and let it be 15, 20. That's what, that's what I wanted. My next question is like, um, when you first bring a kid in or you first bring a pro in, what do you do with them? Man, I, first of all, I have an intake form, which they have to fill out and you know this, right? Um, depends the time that they're going to be in here, right? Sometimes, if it's an NBA guy, I can't really waste a lot of time on intakes on, you know, I prefer to just evaluate him as, as he comes. If it's a league guy, right, an NBA, MLB, NFL, right, just have a talk with him, understand him, ask my proper questions, um, have some objective findings about measurements, about orthopedic tests, about, um, about you know, functionality, right? We don't have, we don't need a lot of info right away if the guy's going to be for us two weeks. We need something crucial that we can develop in those two weeks. And usually if you ask them just a simple question like, hey man, um, what are your past history of injuries? That's a great guy to just go, okay, then we need to train on them. Because if a kid has a left ankle sprain and he's jumping on that leg over and over and using it, then from my side is, I gotta balance the right side more. From your side could be, I can give him one, one foot, you know, jump shot. I can dive more into that right side. So this one could be, less impacted, can rest a little bit more so we can create a better balance on his pelvis and on his body. You know what so was elite for me, my bad, dude. What was elite for me, though, is when you had uh, James, you know, you sent James Feldine over to train with me. And not a lot of trainers, bro, not a lot of strength and conditioning trainers go over there and watch their players actually working out. So, because you sitting there, I'm watching, you sitting there, you're getting down on your knees and you're looking at every shot that he's taking. And you're looking at his movements. 
So then now when you go back, I came over to the to the to the weight room with him. Now I'm looking at him, he's like, Yeah, we're gonna work on this because he was he was getting a little bit or he was overcompensating on this. So salute, you know, to you for doing that because that shows that you really, you know, you really care about about your athlete and not just saying like, man, I'm about to just take his bread and this, that, and the third. Because there's a lot of guys that's going to, you know, you know, do it for for the money. But you yeah. can tell that you actually, you know, you actually love what you're doing. I see it in the passion that shit. And and when you're in there working, every, if you've ever been in the gym with you, everybody can see your passion and how you, you know, you yelling and you clapping. And, you know, you excited. I'm thinking, I'm like, damn, I, I want to go play again when I see you yeah. in that training. That's, that's the you know what I'm just like I tell people, man, I can't teach you anything in the world, but I can teach you how to care. I can teach you anything you want to know, science behind it, your body works, your training, everything, but I cannot teach you how to care. That's something that is on me. I'm going to always care, and how my life turns out to be, that's on end, but I'm going to always care and be a better human for my people, for my athletes, in every single way possible. He, what I think is elite about you is that, or what separates you from other trainers is, Number one, your evaluation, right? Because, uh, and number two is recovery, right? The training part is kind of like, you know, everybody got their thing and I feel like you can all do the same thing, but everybody's not evaluating the kid's body, evaluating the pro body, knowing how to- Consistently evaluate and sit down, yeah. listen, like- And adjust them, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you're working on the proper things. And after you finish your workout, stretching, massage, and recovery, because that's important for longevity. I'm sorry. And, and it's the same with TJ, when I notice him, like, um, you know, when he talk about footwork and, you know, uh, I, I like his creativity with his ball handling mm -hmm. in, his, in his footwork, because, uh, and like, you gotta be a point guard to be able to first be creative in ball handling, mm -hmm. like to be able to do it, because there's certain things that you do with the ball, that I've never done with the ball, I'm not even thinking to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it, it's levels to it. It's levels to everything. You, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's how I look at everything and how I look at developing. You know, um, you know, uh, and you take it step by step. You know, um, run your own race. But I, I, I do think that's the need of you. For you sure. know, um, nah. your evaluation and, 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 and recovery. And know? it was crazy. Like I was on my way. I woke up today. I'm like. What can I do to get it better? I have to have a meeting with my team today, and I'm like, yo, we need to update. Because every three months, bro, this world is changing. Something is new, um, something, whatever, changes, and you gotta be okay with it. You gotta be okay with change and, and realizing that you gotta keep improving on, on every single thing as you go. And I always tell people, like, I have no issue showing people what I do, because at the end of the day, I'm not gonna be the same as I Next year. Really? But then they don't do it with your brain, though. Yeah. It don't matter. That's, you, that's, that's you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, look, you know what's so funny about everything is like, don't we all want to be liked and loved and admired? Don't we all? <laughs> so, how you feeling weird if somebody copying you? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You see? It's, Cause, it's, cause, it's, think about that, right? We all want to be liked, loved, and admired. But as soon as somebody copies, we like, this one. Yeah. Yeah. But. <laughs> Talk about that. That's <laughs> okay, man. So when I first started, I used to see it as damn, man, that's BS. But man, you know how many people you inspire, you inspire, and I'm inspired. You know how many people look up to us quietly without actually saying like, "Yo, I admire this guy because this world is full of ego, and we've been all trapped on it as well, right?" Yes. But then as you keep going, you learn that. Bro, like, if we gonna be this 1%, it's our job to keep elevating. Like, the only time I'm gonna get mad at that is if I can't elevate enough. But if I'm consistently working on myself, reading, going at stuff, learning new stuff, being focused on myself, how am I gonna fail, bro? Like, the majority of my role models are not even doing what I do. Well, talk, I don't even look at people that do what I do. Just like an artist doesn't listen to the same music, that he probably raps on, which a lot of my you know artists do that. I don't, you know, I can look for stuff for creativity, but I don't be consistently looking at it just because I feel like it limits my creativity to be great and, and, and build new things, you know? 
that's just my personal thought, you know? Yeah. I like, what's your thought, Isaac? I mean, really, I mean, according to anatomy, it takes about six to eight weeks to see a proper change on the human body itself, right? That's more scientific wise. It, everybody moves different. It might take a year, it might take two years, it might take three years, four or five, right? The thing with this whole situation and, and encounter is that your life can change. I always tell people my life changed out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Like your life can change. The question is, are you prepared for the change or not, right? It might take you one year if you go into an AAU game and you put in the work, but that's not even the hardest part. It's not to really flourish it out, it's to maintain it. You know how hard it is to maintain being a great kid, being a rank kid, being everything when everybody's eyes on you? The crazy part is, I love it. I actually love having to maintain an elevated kid that has already been there. You know why? Because we got something to prove. We got, we got, we got we to gotta let people know that we're going to be here in a minute. And that's the way I feel about my life. So I just transfer my life in their life. And then if you, if you really gravitate into that, everything is easy. Because when we work, we don't work to get better and look better. No. We work because we have the next guy eating his bowl of cereal thinking, how am I going to outwork this guy? How am I going to be better than this guy? That's we're going nice. to say, no, bro. You're going to find us? We're going to be in the gym. I, I had a team meeting last week, and I'm like, I'm going to be in the gym. If you want to find me, I'm going to be in the gym. That's it. I don't want to portray no image. I'm in the gym. I want to be locked in for my people, and I'm going to be making sure that they understand the value of staying locked in. You know what's so funny? Through my whole my whole life, especially when I, you know, from 14 years old, my friends came from the people who was in the gym with me. You know, um, that's how my friendships, so, so that's how I um, remain friends with people, because that's where I was at. That's where I'm gonna be, bro. Mm -hmm. We may have a small window to do some other things, but yeah. the most of the time I'm spending in the gym. Yeah. You know, and I think that, um, you know, no matter what you do, whether it's basketball, football, whatever it is, you gotta spend time, or most of your time mastering your craft and limited time for distractions. You, you know what I'm saying? And and that's how you will be able to maintain um, and, and continue to elevate. Because like you said, like you point out something cool that like, you know, once you get somewhere, you gotta be able to stay there. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. once you rank, you gotta be able to sure. keep elevating in your rankings or stay there. That's even mm -hmm. harder. You know, it's hard to get there, but then it's hard to stay there. So it, it's like, it's so crazy how everybody will try to you know, look into your world and say something good or say something bad, but they don't actually really know. Mm -hmm. So it's like one of the things you can't even give a fuck. It's a product of victory, bro. Product you, victory. you understand? Yeah. Because each level, it, 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 it requires, I mean, it has its challenges mm -hmm. that you got to be able to overcome. Um, yeah, like people are just so focused on that hit. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, you're going to flourish it out, that hit. But what's next? I mean, what's next? What is gonna, you know, keep elevating you besides that? Mm -hmm. You know, that's really important. E, tell me this, folks. Like, what, what was a what was a low that you, and how you overcame it in your life? So the hurricane hit Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. um, we were devastated by a lot of family members and everything around those lines. I was just graduating. I never wanted to stay in the island, but I had a responsibility because my family was out there. They wanted me to open a business out there and just be a regular, you know, come in, have a business, nine to five, go home. But I was never like that, bro. I was never like that. Um, I was always this kid that used to tell people, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna play in Duke. I'm gonna play in North Carolina. Or I was a dreamer. Dream big, that's it. And you know what's crazy? Like, I got there, may not be playing, but I got there being able to assist and help kids be better. So, you know, in that moment, when the whole hurricane happened, I just made the science, I just, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I make a fact of saying, bro, you can't go back home right now. And it's either Miami or Orlando. What do you think about doing? So I started working at jobs that I didn't like. And I have to tell people this because people think that, oh, you started working with athletes, everything was great. I was broke. 
I was literally working with a lot of athletes, nine to five, at a motor vehicle accident clinic, nine to five. <laughs> and then in the rest hours, I was working with athletes for free. Everybody thought life was great because I was working with this guy and this guy, and I really was going through it. Cost me relationships, cost me a lot of, you know, you know, things in my personal life that now I'm trying to regain because I've been so locked in on it. That is part of being successful. Um, and just consistently doing it for the love and, and, and helping other people got to the point where I'm like, bro, like, this is for me. And everybody like, no, don't do that, man. There's no money on it. Don't do this. Specifically, my family wanted the best for me. They wanted the best for me. They're like, E, just focus on opening up something that will direct itself to being economically good. And you know, when you start in the sports business, you don't really get money to what? A couple of years, bro. You don't really get money. I have to state this a fact. You have to eat noodles, bro. You have to eat noodles. You have to, you have to eat home. There's no money even to buy a Pixar, Pixar, bro. Like on your sheet day, whatever you want to call it, right? You know what I'm saying? But like, it's real. Like people think like, no, this is great. No. You're going to have to eat some bullshit here and there. But are you able enough to do that to become the human being that you want to? And when you say that, I think about my brother. My, my brother, um, he talks about how... Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh, no, 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 he, not his he, he, he always talk about, like, you know, some of his coworkers over the years, right? You know, they work, you know, they, they in the, you know, they in the school system and they teach it. And, you know, he talk about how much they got to save money. And he just talk about how the wife tell the husband, like, don't make no stops on the way home because we can't afford it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, yeah. and and it, it it make me realize like it make me understand like where you coming from, and how it takes you a few years to build a business. And the same thing with an athlete too. Like, I mean, it took me it took me like five years to feel like I was a real pro as far as the money I was making. So it, it, it always it, you know it's a it's a process. It's like know? this misconception that. When you're good, people just believe that you're good at you know everything. Mm -hmm. No, it's not, man. So you're gonna go through the faces. We all go through faces, right? Um, and I, you know, I've been blessed enough that my parents could help me. But I said, Nah, you're not gonna help me. I'm gonna do it my way. Mm -hmm. I remember looking at my boy. I was like, Yo, <laughs> this is my bank account number. It was like four dollars, bro. He like, E, you gotta pay rent next week. And I'm like, Don't worry, bro. I got this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hustle with integrity and I'm gonna do my thing because I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And I was find a way, bro. I was find a way, and and through it, I just overcame. You know, the pandemic hit. I had to cut about forty athletes because I couldn't do it no more for free. I had to respect myself and my craft enough that I already be confident on myself to say, no, I'm changing you, your life, your life, your life. I got you from a seventy-five k contract into a one fifty contract. Let's eat. Let's just all all Let's eat. You know what I'm saying? So that really really helped me and the people that understood that really gravitated and said no and yo he's right and i still do it here and there because i want to help people out bro too i i i i think that if god bless you you got to bless other people of course and i'm moving that way i've been leaning into that way more this past you know year you know my relationship with god and and, and doing the right things has always been a priority nowadays so you know just sticking to that tell me what uh, tell me something about your life that you're most proud of and um before you get before we get out of here, I want you mm -hmm. to shout. I want you to shout out some people, mm -hmm. and and tell me a client that you that you think would be cool to come on talking to. All right, you want to be uh, real people high. that yeah. changed my life for real, for real. Man, when I was in school, I got thrown out, so that really motivated me. I got thrown out because I couldn't focus on the given matter they were giving me in school because I didn't like it. And I'm not saying kids shouldn't go to school. You definitely got to go to school. But those same professors that didn't believe on me hit on my line now and say, yo, I'm, pr I'm proud of you. And that motivated me enough because that whole concept of, yo, you're thrown out of school, I never shared this before. But I was. From the same Dorado that I raised at, I was thrown out of it. And my family said, nah, you're good. You got this. And that whole story for me because I wasn't thrown out because I was 
doing the wrong things, fighting his how to grill shit with everybody. Mm -hmm. I was just an active kid um, that was navigating through life, mm -hmm. right? When that happened, it hit home at an early stage. And I told myself, nah, man, I'm gonna turn this into greatness. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna shout out those, you know, those professors, they know who they are, right? Um, that really made it tough in that moment. Wait. Because in life, you also have great people also that believe on you. you. You always need some people that believe on you. And for me, that was my mom, my dad, my, my sister, my brother, who were sticking to it, saying, now nah, you got this, bro, keep going. You know, that's why I really value the, 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 the essence of the family that you have and you have. Anybody can say anything, but the value of family is everything. So I want to definitely, you know, shout them out for making me the person that I am, not because I was mad I did it, but because I, I felt like I owe it to myself. Mm -hmm. And then secondary, um, big, big, big change in moment also with, with you know, being from Puerto Rico, man. I don't say I'm Puerto Rican with like the sense of, oh yeah, I'm from Puerto Rico. No, I am literally from there. I go out there, I go out there to humble myself sometimes and say, how far have I come? Because we are so surrounded so much by everything great. We have so many. It, it, used to, it used to irritate me a little bit, but then as you think about it, bro, nobody played the game the way I played the game. Like, it would be a bunch of different, it's got a bunch of trainers out here in Orlando, but none of them can go out and read the game the way I read it. Nobody can play it the way I play it. And yeah, that's what, that's what gave me my peace. And it's just like, you know what, bro? I had a long career out here with basketball. 12 years for an undersized point guard is a long time. So I was like, you want your kids to be better and want your kids to learn how to play the game the right way, then cool, bring them over. But if you want them to just only be thinking about scoring and only be thinking about themselves, then go train wherever you need to have them train at. Because that's what most trainers are going to teach you anyway, how to just play, you know, play one-on-one. -on -one. But you, nobody's teaching you how to play without the ball. Nobody's teaching you how to drive and kick. Nobody's teaching you baseline drive, baseline drift. Like, I had kids that was 14 years old yesterday in my, in my camp. And I asked them, I said, hey, you ever, you ever heard of baseline drive, baseline drift? And they're like, no. I say, bro, y'all in AAU playing all these tournaments and don't even understand that. I say, so if you drew a baseline, you never heard of the guy sliding corner? And the kid was like, no, I never heard of that. And you're 14? It's crazy. But I didn't know you were that 14 either. It's crazy, bro. Because, yeah. but, but, you know, like, that's why I say it's levels to everything. And it's like, you know, just like an evaluation, just like when a kid comes to you, like, you know, you want to make sure he know how to dribble, shoot, and pass. Can't do those, you can't play basketball. <laughs> so that's like the first thing. Right. So then the next thing right. is kind of like knowing how to play right. with other people. So I understand if, if a kid don't don't know that, because it, it, man, it took me some years in the game to, to know a lot about, to know what I know today about basketball. And like, that's why I feel like at the end of my career, when, you know, when, when uh, you know, coaches, scouts, teams think that you are, you know, um, you you done or you out of your prime. To me, that was when I was my best. Like my best, to me as a player, I was at my best my last season in the NBA. Wow, that's amazing. And and you feel me? And, and it was because of how I took care of my body and, you know, all the coaches that I went through and all the teammates that I had that I learned so much about the game about that I knew how to kind of manipulate the game. And, um, but in the eyes of you know a team or a coach, whenever you got a certain amount of years, they look at well he a little older. You know they look at you, they look at you different. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I was my best. Mm -hmm. And even today, like man, listen, TJ knows man. Mm -hmm. I badly played at E, mm -hmm. and if I consistently play, I can play in the league today. You know. You know how the league is nowadays. It's if they're young, they want them because they can develop them. Mm -hmm. They're trying to project people out, how they could be instead of just getting well taller in the moment. Mm -hmm. But you're you saying they, the league, they go off of potential and development. They can develop you, right? Okay. But do you not realize that we have more and more young guys that's going into the D League mm -hmm. and getting up out of the NBA just because they underdevelop? So you draft and doing all this drafting off of potential and off of, okay, I'm going to develop you. But, bro, that foundation ain't there early, bro. It's going to be tough. So, you know, you, that's know right. what, you know what it is, though? So, you're right. When, when you get to the league, they look at you and, and, and base everything off your potential, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, he's 6'9". Projections. You feel me? But it's your job to develop yourself when you get there. Because sure. it's like, you're a grown man now. 
You know, sometimes when you're a top pick, they may assign somebody to you, yeah. but it's really your job. Mm -hmm. Go find the Esteban, go find the TJ, mm -hmm. and develop yourself. Yeah. You, you got to be, you know, just like I was telling you about, you know, me with Brandon Jr., like mm -hmm. the difference between me and other people and why. On ideals because at the end of the day, if you struggle or fail, that's on you. You know, and you know what's crazy? I was just thinking yesterday, I was be, uh, with BJR, with uh, JR yesterday, Brandon Bassiar. Um, I'm not saying this because you're his dad. I, I don't, I, you know, I, I, I like being role stuff, and I think that that's a great example. About two years ago and a half, we started with probably three years ago, right? Two to three. Um, we had a kid in the facility come in, bro, and this. It's just a kid. It's just a kid walking into the stage mm -hmm. and without, you know, just any knowledge and every raw talent possible in the world. How do you connect these pieces and make this kid understand that he's not an average kid? That he's really, really a talented, God-given kid, right? And I feel like, bro, like experiences with him during the years have made him into the human being that he is into the great kid, bro. When you're a great kid, people love you. When you do it for the wrong reasons, people don't gravitate to that. Mm -hmm. And I really believe not only in making them better athletes, that's the easy part, but it's making them great human beings enough to understand that if I make a mistake, I'm human enough to fix it. And I have my dad on the side, I have, a, you know, I have him on the side, I have the other guy on the side that are gonna go for me. They're gonna make me you know, be better. They're not going to be cheerleaders. They're going to tell me exactly what I need to hear for me to maintain myself a lot of focus. And that's important. You need a circle of people that tell you the truth, that value you as a human being, not just for conveniency, but because they care enough about you to grow. Because if you grow, we all grow. That's the answer. No, I agree with that. And, and telling the truth, right? So you see how... Um, you see how Bronny's number, uh, mm -hmm. Bronny just got drafted by the Lakers? Yep, what, 55, right? 55. Yeah. First, how you feel about that? Relationships in the business get you places. What about you? How you feel? I mean, I say the same thing. It's, it's, you know, of course, there's a bunch of other kids that didn't get drafted that uh, probably could have got drafted and should have, but then when you look at it, bro, that's my son I'm doing the fucking same thing. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I, you know, it to me, and I feel like he might, he might, he might pan out to be, you know, eventually be better. I mean, but shit, Jordan kids ain't make it. You know what I'm saying? Is he a pro though? Is he a pro? Mm -hmm. Right now, I wouldn't. Uh, no, right I now. wouldn't say yeah. Right now, no, bro. Like, like the kid from the kid from uh, from Connect. I mean, uh, Kentucky. The what is it? The one with the Rockets. Uh, Reed. What? Reed, bro. He's Reed a pro. Shepard? Yeah, yeah. He's a pro, like, they the same class, right? Uh, man, yeah, I think yeah, so. Like yeah. They both, yeah, bro, yeah, he's yeah. a fucking pro. Like, just how easy the game comes to him, you know what I'm saying? Right. Don Connect is a pro. Who's Don Connect? From Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Play, play up the Lakers right now. Okay, so check this out. Now, this is my take on it. No. So, about telling the truth. I'm sure LeBron told him the truth. And been telling him the truth since he a kid. Because as a dad, you have a responsibility. And... And the reason why I brought it up because just like, you know, like if you coach your son his daddy ball, if you're watching him and you got and you got to point us to a coach, it's like you're looking at it from a dad lens. Mm -hmm. But in reality, like, you know, you you spoke about telling kids the truth. As a parent, you got to be the number one at telling your kid the truth. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to put it into that opinion of people thinking like uh, parents. You know, um, don't tell the kids the truth. That play the game. I know parents that don't play the game, maybe yeah. it's a different story. Yeah. But like so for example, to me, LeBron, Bron is a pro to me. He just might he he just might not be a, a ready to play pro, mm -hmm. but he's a pro to me, right? The reason why I say he's a pro is because first of all, he's he was top 25 player in his class. 
right? Um, usually when you top 25 in your class, you're a McDonald's All-American, you're going, you, in a year or two, you'll be a gravity or something. Like that. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, he missed out on that year, right? Due to the heart situation. Yeah, that was also a thing too, like, he had right. a medical condition, yeah. bro, like, right? He could have developed on that year. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just had, I mean, you can't. But, you know, he was, I don't think he was top two. He was the first player that wasn't in the top 25 to make the McDonald's game. He was like 38, 40 or something like that. No, 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 TJ. He has to be within that by time, by him, you know. That, that's a good no, point. If that's the, the case, first, He's I don't the know. first player to ever be, I'm telling you, like at the end of the, uh, the rankings, I'm going to say he was like 38, 39, or maybe even like 40. And he made it in there. Made it in there. That's tough. Okay. Yeah. So, but just another thing, I didn't know that. That's a good one. Cool. Yeah. But this, this is another thing to you, like, uh, man, I played three seasons of summer league, bro. I played it when I came in as a rookie, after my rookie season, and after my second season. And I didn't really start playing consistent minutes to my third season in the NBA. Wow. So, it takes some time, man. And, and I was able to play, you know, 12 years, you know, uh, in the NBA and a couple years in China. But it's like, some people take a little time to get to where they need to be, you know what I'm saying? And he could be one of those yeah. people. Man. But I think the NBA right now wants that, bro. The NBA is looking for it. By the way, I have to say this, bro. Like, I'm proud of the international game. Mm -hmm. Two kids in a draft were from France. Yeah. The beginning two kids were doing good things. International ball game is doing amazing things. They are. They and are. going back to what you have to say, it's it's like, it's just a projection. How can I take this kid? It's a gamble. It's like you're gambling. You're right. gambling on a kid that you don't really know if it's going to be great, uh -huh. but it may turn out to be great. For sure. That's life, you know? Like, Tim, just, I know you know the players, but who's the number one draft pick? This year? Yeah. I have no clue. See, this, I, my, this is my thing, uh, right? <laughs> You know, you know, who was it? But I don't you know. Right. You know right. I can look him up, but no, I don't know. No, don't look right. him up. But, but look, yeah. so, you know what's so funny to me? That everybody's talking about Bronny, but not the number one pick. Yeah, this crazy. shit is unheard. This, this shit never really oh, happened like this. Right. That you talking about the 55th pick. They, yeah, they on his ass when, right now. I'm, I'm rooting one. for him now. When you I tell you I'm rooting for him so much, I want him to, like, I want him to yeah. succeed. Like, I want him to, like, maybe the next summer league game, Go out for like 25, 30. He so might. I hope he do, bro. Yeah. Because everybody yeah. wishing the kid, bro, like, you find you, any any grown man, anybody out there that's wishing that the kid have a downfall, you fucked up in the head, bro. Like, I'm I crazy hope he does good, bro. I think that, it, I, I really think that maybe somehow this world and, and God is putting him an obstacle right now to self believe on himself that he's actually so, poten he's so potential to, you know, to, he has the potential to become a better athlete, not because of his dad, but because of him. And I think that if he over exceeds, if he self, you know, self sees this whole setup of what's going on, everything is like, I think. Well, yeah, yeah, I love that. You know why? Because it's like, it's like, uh, it's like when I be training to join y'all, I be telling him sometimes, you got to deserve the ball. Yeah. And to me, like, it's like anything else. Like, you're going to feel good when you, when you overcome something, you know, just like when it rains and the sun come out, you, you can you appreciate it more. And I think, like you said, like the kid don't really have to hoop. No, you know what I'm saying. But the fact that he could go through early struggles and overcome and come on the other side of it, I feel like he appreciate it. Well, talk, I think that's harder. I think when you have yeah. a like a lot of people can't take a loss or take a half hoop and just get back up and keep going. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So uh, I, I like that you. What, what are your thoughts on? What do you think about that, bro? Man, just speaking on what you said about a lot of people not being able to take an ass whooping, it's just because of the society that we're living in now. Taking an ass whooping ain't cool no more. So everybody want to post their wins. Everybody want to be that guy. You know what I'm saying? And I, I talked about that uh, with one of my kids the other day when we were training. I'm like, bro, like, just imagine if a camera went everywhere with you throughout the day, and they put, the, you know, you had your bad shit and your good shit. Would you post that? And the kid was like, no. I say, okay, so everything that you're looking at on Instagram, that shit ain't real. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, everybody gonna post their achievements and their success because that's the hot thing to do now. Nobody wanna post that. Man, I fucked up, I made a mistake, but I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to be better. It's like, the cool thing now is just to show that you're doing all this great shit when that ain't who you are. 
So then now when you fail or a mistake happened, and then it's out in the media or it's out somewhere, everybody like, oh shit, look at this guy. That's 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 what they magnified in. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, bro, and, and nobody teaches you that, bro. That's life. <clears throat> I was just going with one athlete as well. And that. it's no old it's no old people that's just like, bro, you fucked up, it's okay, get your ass back up, we're going to work out again. And it is okay. Because we're humans. Yeah, yeah. We're not gonna be perfect. We we try to live in this world where people think we're not humans. Right. And I'm like, hold up, bro. Like, nah, bro. Like, I'm I'm gonna make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes, right? Um, but you know what I was thinking? I consider those private victories. Mm-hmm. We are trying to all the time present to the media and the world that we are so successful and stuff. But that's a public victory. Your private victories are the ones that you go on a daily, like waking up, like making it here, like eating healthy, like. Yes, Go training and not following the motions, like being a lead at what you do, right? And when you do those type of things, it may not show now. It may not show, it may not show in six months, it may show in a year, who knows? Bro. But eventually, God is gonna put it in a place, man. I gotta I gotta shout out my pastor, Pastor Jeremy Dunn, because it was something that he said, this was like in 2019, 2018. He was like, private disciplines produce public victories. Mm. And I was just like, that's, like, Dang, that's big time. Yeah. So shout out to Pastor Jeremy. I still remember that. Damn. Yeah. I still remember yeah. that. Today. It is, you know what? It's true. It's kind of like, it's kind of like me and what I do, right? <laughs> yesterday we played pickup yesterday, and um, and TJ was like, uh, I got to, I got to the gym late. They had played like two games already, but I told I told the guys I was like, man. I haven't played in like two months, man, and y'all tired already. Right, right. And TJ was like, man, you be doing other stuff too, though. So like, that's me doing other things in yeah. private, and then when I get to the court, you know, yeah. you see, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. Probably, and I'm an old head now, too, yeah, man. Right. I used to have a, one of my best friends, he's African uh, from Philly, and um, in college, he was good. He was really good uh, athlete in soccer, and I'm like, oh, bro, you didn't even work out. He's like, E, because you don't see me working out. Because I'll be waking up at 4 or 5 a.m. when nobody's doing it because I don't have to show the world what I'm doing. While I completely, you know, agree and also believe that you have to show a little bit of the work you do because nowadays you're a product, right? Mm -hmm. But um, it also, there's also some private victories you have to follow and be okay with. There's also some private stuff that you got to be cool with it and then let the results show themselves. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a good one too. You are a product, so you should post. Mm-hmm. You should, I, you should I put yourself that. out there a little bit more. Yeah, I yeah. believe that, man. I'm a huge believer of it just because I know how the media is and the social media is a great tool to get players known and um, to also be put in the spotlight for them to, you know, to really have an exposition because back then, you guys didn't have that. Absolutely. Back right. then, it was send a video, send a clip, and if the coach sees the whole game, it was tougher. They had to see all the mistakes you made, bro. Yeah. Now it's highlights and, and you know, it's, it's gotten tougher, bro. But I was on my way here and about, I was reading like, what, 1.2% make it to the league, bro. Yeah. Is it, is it, I don't, is it correct me if I'm wrong. Like it's, one, it's super low, bro. Yeah, like super one point low. something and then one point, you know, one point makes it to division one. Mm-hmm. Oh, we bless, we bless, and I say it, bro, like we bless enough to be a professional, to be an NBA guy, to be, you know, all around of what I've done. Mm-hmm. We bless. Sure. But we, we, we need to acknowledge that on God, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's big, that's big. Yeah. Where your passion for training come from? Where your, well, for what you do right now today, where, where, that, where that passion come from? Just obsession, man, obsession. I, I was taught at an early stage that if you want to be something, be the best at it. Yeah. And my mama always told me like, hey, if you want to be a barber, if you want to be a musician, whatever it is, just make sure you're the best at it. And, you know, I should just hit home. It hit home because uh, I never felt like I'm accomplished. And while it's a great quality and it brings you also issues in this world, right? Because you also got to be sometimes feeling fulfilled, right? Absolutely. For me, it's like, bro, like, the more I do, the more I question myself and say, could there be more? Mm -hmm. Could I reach more heights? Could I encounter better environments, right? Um, But never forgetting the love for what I do. So, 
Yeah, man, just the passion for training came within the obsession of how could I improve myself? Because I didn't have the talent that a lot of people had, but I couldn't compete against them. And they respected me because they knew that I really trained. And then it got to the point where they were all training with me, bro. The whole squad was training with me, but I didn't see it like that. I see it like I'm chilling with my homies, we vibing. But bro, about what, six players out of my school were literally, yo, E, when you go to the gym? Yo, E, when you're doing your core stuff? Yo, E, because I used to study it. I used to, I used to be like, bro, there's no way this guy can shoot better than me if I shoot a thousand shots a day. So I operated with logic. I said, I don't got the God-given ability. So how could I really make this an ability? And I did, bro. I said, well, I did. I did make it an ability to, to, to be great in that moment because of my work ethic. Um, and that's something dope, man. I, I was seeing your video. Um, and I don't know if the, the documentary you have going on right now. Dude, and I use it as an example a lot. You said, I'm confident enough because my work ethic got me here. Mm -hmm. yep. Bro, that, I want to talk about that, bro. I felt like, like I want you to give me an insight for people to know about that. And I, and I want you to express yourself in that given manner about how did that come along? So, I, I always prided myself on being a grinder. Mm -hmm. And um, since I was like 15 years old, and it, uh, over time, it created so many small successes for me. And, you know, when my back against the wall, that's what I rely on, my work ethic. You know what I'm saying? Because I know if, if, if nothing else work, if, if, I, if I can't go talk to the coach, hey, coach, can you give me some playing time? Or ask somebody, can you do me a favor? I know I can rely on me and the work I'm going to put in, you know, to um, be, become successful. So that was my thinking. Um, because yeah, I created a habit of just, you know, um, just working hard from a youngster, you know, and, cool. it, and yeah, and it, it was successful. How was it? What about you, champ? What are you? Well, I was just counted out all my life. I was the smallest on every team I played on. I told B, like, the joke, the joke about me working out now, but my nickname used to be Short Pat. I was like 4'10", and I was fat as shit. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if I can say that now. You know, you can't say fat. There's a lot of shit you can't say. So I was fat as shit. I was overweight, though. And uh, man, yeah, like I just, I worked my ass off to get slimmer. And yeah, like being able to play D1, go to, you know, University of Virginia, didn't start right away. I worked my ass off to start. Like we had top building and majestic map. You know, I'm kicking their ass every day in practice. Then eventually coach had to start me. And then guess what? My next year, the second year, coach didn't start me. We got a new recruit in. So now I had to work my ass off again and he started me again. So all my entire life, bro, it was just about like, I had to prove myself yeah. always. So that was like the chip that I had on my shoulder. I'm like, fucking show you that I can, I can do this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. And every guy that was in front of me from when I was young, everybody that started in front of me, all of them, I had a longer professional career than any of them. So. Man, cool. Man. That was God testing you, bro. Yeah, for sure. Every single time. That was right. dope. So you you train. Um, what age do you start at training? Um, when I graduated, bro, like. No, what, what age kids you start? Cause you you train. Yeah, you train that's, kids that's to, to yeah, pros, right? That's what I want to get to. So when I graduated, I didn't want to do kids to be with you, bro. Mm -hmm. Just my mind was so centered on, and this happens a lot to people too. I was like, nah, man, I'm just gonna do professional athletes. I'm just gonna lock in, in professional athletes, man. That's it, right? And about two years after my graduation, um, it was professional or highly ranked players. That was just like the goal, right? I had a call from a dad who was recommended, who told me like, yo E, I know you don't be working with kids, but I really want you to take care of this, you know, of this kid. And um, that was um, Felipe Quinones, right? His dad, Luis, um, really built a great rapport with me to elevate this kid's mind, right? So I felt like, bro, like from Puerto Rico, um, I felt like I had to do it. I had no other option, right? So yeah, man, um, just being able to 
to get that call and say, hey, I need you to take care of my kid. And being from back home, that made a switch for me. That, that just clicked in. And um, I decided to, to just, you know, just take the opportunity. Mm-hmm. And that opportunity got me to think like, bro, hold up, this, there's beauty in this. Because if I can take a kid that is actually 11 and 12 and has the desire as I do to be great, we can change them. Hmm. Cause we, 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 that's what we do. We, we change lives, right? Um, and that's where the whole concept started me thinking like, no, no, you have to start moving different. You have to start seeing out there other people. You have to also take kids that might not have the talent but you never know if in life they can become a doctor, an attorney, a successful business entrepreneur. You don't know that. So we can't just base people on how good they are, but how motivated and obsessive they are about their work. You know, it's crazy. that, I, And I was the complete opposite. I didn't want pros because at the pro level, you think most of them guys... They already done made it like they, you know, and there's a lot of stuff I want to teach them. I, like if I see them doing something bad, like they going to be, you know, I want to tell them like, yo, that's wrong. You know what I'm saying? And most of the pros, they, go, they don't want to hear that shit. They just want you to keep them in shape. Like when you're training the pro, most of the time, like in your business, ours is a little bit different. But most of the time, they know exactly what they need to work on. So you're just keeping them in shape. But for me, I like the little kids that I see them running, running funny. I see them like Bambi, but I'm like, man, I'm going to turn them up. And, and now... They gonna be my product. They walking around and everybody be like, man, that kid, that's the one that trained Mr. Cerebro and he couldn't walk into bubble gum at the beginning. I see so it, now bro. look at this. Bro, I see it. He's yeah. right, I seen it, bro. And I seen him doing it, bro. That that's so motivational, bro. That bro, like that seeing kids get offers, walking yeah. four or five years, bro. You don't understand. Like that feeling is something that it's just different, man. I, I work with league, whatever, guys, and everything, MLB, whatever, but that Text message saying, hey, dog, I got my first offer. Yeah. That's something that, I mean, bro, like, just yeah. bless. Well, we'll talk about developing kids versus developing pros. Because I feel like both of them were, require development. Like, um, you know, because uh, I played with pros that wasn't quite developed, mm-hmm. you know, when they got into the NBA. Um, and we know kids are not always fully developed, whether it's, whether it's basketball skills on, on, with TJ, or it's, you know, fitness skills, and, uh, you know, developing kids in the weight room. So tell me what y'all, what y'all think about developing kids versus the pros. Man, I'm gonna break it down super simple for you. Um, I'm gonna break it down super simple. Um, when we talk about development, one second, one second. This man crazy, bro. Yeah, we, we're trying to do a podcast. Huh? Yeah, we're trying to do a podcast, man. Say that again? We're recording. We're recording right now, trying to do a podcast. I'm quiet. I'm quiet. Well, I have to breathe. I'm not going to die. I told Maria that I was going to do it. You still want to do it? Keep on going. No problem. Breathe all you want. Here we go. Uh, let's reset the tone on that one because that, yeah. that question is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Great, great, great question. question. Right, 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 right. We'll make this five. I got you. Um, tell me this. What, um, and this is the, the question that a lot of parents ask me all the time, man. I don't have an answer, man. I, I wish I would have tell you this specific time frame, but I wouldn't. Really harder, bro. Like, that's, I think people are like, no, you either be successful because you made out the mud, you uh, this thing. Nah, bro. Uh, no, you made it out because. You want to mentally and obsessively create a better outcome on your life, right. not just dependent on somebody else's, but on yours. That's that's respectable to me, bro. Right, look, you, you got two kids, right? You got this kid, he's trying to get it out of the mud. You got this kid, daddy everything, daddy mm-hmm. all-American, best player in the NBA, the all-time leading scorer. And then you coming out, you playing, you want to play basketball, but it's like, bro, they looking at you. You got, they got a, they got a magnifying glass on you every, every game that you go play in, and all the guys, all the kids that you're playing against, they like, man, I'm gonna go at his neck to show that I'm way better than him. But it, you know how tough that is, bro. You just so you know how I look at it though. So it's, it's like, it's kind of like this, right? Like, but people always say like, 
you know, the kids that are have pro dads, like they they so blessed and they so fortunate. It's hard. And it's they feel like, hard, and and people be like, you know, the kids that got it from they had nothing, got it easy as well because they got so much to be motivated. You know what I'm saying? They got they don't have nothing, so they they easily motivated. Right. I think it's to me it's like this, bro. You know, both of them come with this his gifts and his curses. You know, I just it just uh me being a um, a dad that played in the NBA, it's like you get more of like people just thinking that you privileged as a um, as a as an NBA ball player. In which you are privileged, but you you got your struggles as well. You know what I'm saying? You got there's stuff that comes with that too. You right. know what I'm saying? So it, it it's it's kind of about to me how you um how you able to deal with you know. Uh, the things on your journey, you know what I'm saying? It's the same though. I was just with um, Dior Johnson yesterday, one of my guys who just committed to, to UCF. Shout out to Dior. Mm-hmm. And we're having a conversation, bro, about how the kid at 15, 16, they get all this things, all this, you know, coming from nothing, from New York, right? They, they just get everything at an early stage. And people think life is great. And bro, when you have all these amazing things at an early age, it triggers your mind. And mentally, if you're not strong enough, you can fail. Mm-hmm. And life will test you. Yep. It's the same thing with a kid whose uh, parents are also been there because he feels like the biggest challenge is going to be his dad. Right? When in reality, it's not you. It's him. Mm-hmm. Because he can take it to the top. Mm-hmm. Higher. Mm-hmm. You know, higher than whoever has. Because that is part of the new generation. You work and you work, and you never know how far you can take it. Absolutely. Eve, tell, tell me about some of your, um, f- first, how long do you take, do you, have you seen that it takes for kids to develop, to go from one level to the next? Mm-hmm. But it's also going to require you to put the same effort I did, right? Um, and then lastly, I think you should definitely bring out here TJ's preacher, because I like that quote. And I think that um, Pastor people. Who? Pastor Jeremy Dunn. Yeah, uh, get, and I get think, Pastor Jeremy yeah, Dunn. And, I, and I'm honest with you, a lot of, a lot of, I think one of our goals should be just to get this upcoming generation to believe in themselves and in God, and and, and also to be great human beings, hmm. the the best way they can, so that everything can direct themselves that way. When, when you say great human being, give me a few things. It's simple, that make you. Great. It's simple, man. Have a purpose in life. Mm-hmm. Follow it. Do it with love and help people around it with it. Uh, I, I was reading a book this morning that said, take care of your people. Mm. Take care of your people. That's it. Just take care of the people you love, help other people along the way, and don't forget to take care of, of yourself. Mm. Yep. I think we end on that, man. Yeah. Let's get it, man. Thank you for coming <laughs> talk to you guys. Oh my God. Appreciate you guys. Yep. Let's get to it. Until next time. Let's get it. We out.